So let me, let me just start with a brief overview of what Docker is. I'm sure most of you know about it and have heard and more probably use it, but you know, let's summarize it a little bit. So this is the, these are the slides that you see on, on the Docker website. It's basically marketing. You, you, if you know how it works, it's basically wrapping your application with all the libraries in a package that you run on your computer, on your systems. Uh, in this case, they are comparing the Docker engine with a hypervisor, but the concept is similar, whether instead of uh, packing up the whole guest OS, a new kernel on top of another kernel on a virtualized system, you just run like a package with all your libraries, uh, like a true root, if we put it that way. Uh, however, um, if you look at it from our perspective, uh, HPC, let's look at how it works and then we can go with why we think or why we don't think it's a good tool for HPC environments. So basically, Docker works with, with images, and image is just a file that, or a bunch of layers that stack up together to become one file that I can, can be either a full OS ver uh, container, I mean image, excuse me, which uh, will contain your whole tree, or it will contain just some of it. For example, the Python example is just uh, the Python library with whatever it needs to run Python co code. Uh, so it's really useful in some environments because it can isolate your uh, processes using something called namespaces of the kernel that allows your processes only to see what you want them to see, which is pretty good for some applications. Um, generally speaking, on a simplest form, simplifying a lot and really simplifying, basically Docker, what it does is pull an image, which is a file, do something like a change root on that, on that image, which from that point on is called container, and then it runs your application isolated in that, in, in that environment. So this allows you to run any application you have compact into one thing in any compute node that you have, in any server you have. However, it can also do other things, nice things. So it can do network funky things such as nothing or breaching, whatever you want to do it, it can do it. Uh, and it also has a GUI, which is nice for some people. However, in our HPC environments, uh, we think it's not particularly good or the best option to use. Uh, mainly because, I'm not going to go through all of this, but basically because of uh, this. Docker by default does not isolate processes or users into shared file systems. So if you have in an HPC environment, your users, your home directory is shared, and you, got, you let your users run a Docker container, what he can do, he can become root within that container. And if he is root in that container, it means that he can be root on the file system. It's, it is true that you can isolate what the user can see, but it's still not nice that your user can become root on any part of your shared file system. So that's one of the main reasons we think it's not the most suitable tool for HPC environments. I'm sure people will, like, agree and disagree with my view, but let's leave it there. Um, and something that I found particularly interesting is, is this, that nowadays to build Docker, you need to have a Docker. You need to build it within a Docker container. So if you have difficult time building Docker on your Cray system, for example, how do you build new versions of Docker? It becomes complicated. Um, I, but of course, as I said, we don't, as CSCS don't think this is the best tool for our needs, but any system can make it work, right? You can create wrappers, you can do funky things around it and make it work. It just becomes increasingly, increasingly complex to make it run in a nice way and while allowing all your users to have all the functionality they want. So instead of continuing that path of writing wrappers that could do whatever we need, which is a lot of effort on itself, we want to look at something called Shifter. Shifter is a container-based container -based solution, uh, thought from the ground up, from the ground up uh, having in mind HPC environments, in particular Cray systems. Uh, one of the nice features is that it leverages from current Docker uh, environment by being able to pull images from Docker Hub. So if you have your image, you just pull it, and you can use it with Shifter. No big deal. Um, summarizing again a lot, what it does is basically pull the image. Usually you can put it on Scratch, which is a nice 
uh, addition or a nice change compared to Docker, where you usually put it on your local file system if you have it. Uh, it does create a loop device with the image, at which point we call it a container. And then it simply creates a root on that. Simple, plain. There's nothing else than that. And then it runs your application on the root. So it is designed to work with HPC. And it is possible to choose what file system to expose your container. Same thing as with Docker. But in this case, everything runs in user land. So your user will not be able to write or do anything as root on your container, on your exposed file systems. Uh, it also allows you to do nice things, such as uh, allowing your users only to see their own home directory, for example. Things of that kind. Or if you have a burst buffer on your, on your system, it allows you to to limit your users to specific areas of your file system. So Shifterworks the architecture is quite simple. It's mainly done with two components. The first one is Uli root, which is responsible for creating the loop devices. It basically does the root and cl clean up some things here and there, but there's really not much to it. Uh, it's simple. If you look at the code, it's quite simple. Um, it is nice that there are some workload managers plugin. Uh, plugins for it. So we use Slurm. So we have a plugin that allows your, your Slurm, your user running Slurm to get a shifter environment using Slurm commands. Uh, it's written in C. And then the other part is the image gateway, which is just is responsible for fetching your images from Docker Hub or your private registry, pulling them on your file system, and keeping track of what, we've, what you have on the file system. Um, there really is not much to it. I mean, it's just a MongoDB with uh, some um, uh, some interesting pieces of, of Python code. Um, it, it, they they speak with uh, some, with a RESTful API between each other. So the user normally interacts with Udi root. All the commands run here. It's either on the compute node or a login node. Uh, and this this guy here talks to the image where we gave way to fe fetch the image or to list what images are there, and whatnot. So it's quite simple. It doesn't require any uh, daemon to run on your compute nodes. It's all done from the login node. So let me explain you a workflow, a typical workflow of how a, a user will use it. Um, but basically, you, you have your guy here. He builds your image in his local laptop, whatever he wants. And then he just pushes it to Docker Hub your registry. And in this example, I just pushed one of my images. That's it. Simple, you can run it on your system, you can test it, and if it works, you push it, and then you test it on a bigger system. Uh, then the user logs into the, into the system, in which case is called Santis, just loads a typical module, the, the call shifter, pull image. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you pull your image, you wait a little bit, and it's there. Basically, what the image gateway is doing is pulling the image, contacting Docker Hub, getting the image, get all the layers of the Docker image, compress them, stack them, and squash them on, on one file, and put it on a, on a shared file system that your computer node can access. That's it. This is how it will look like if you look at uh, a list of your images. Um, yeah. And then, if the user wants to use it, it's, the workflow is like any other thing in Slurm. You just run your sbatch command, uh, sbatch job description, with a few additions, thanks to the Spunk plugin that allows you to, to do things with it. Um, so basically, you have to choose the image that you want to use, the volumes you want to show. In this case, I'm showing this, but uh, you could put your defaults. The user assignment could decide to expose only users or scratch or whatever. And then you just run your binary or your executable, in this case, cat etsy red high release, with the shifter word behind it, which is a binary. That's it. Um, thanks to this Spunk plugin, you just create the loop device automatically and everything is done for you. Um, later on, I will show you a few, a few examples of how it works, but let me just go quickly about how to build Shifter, which in my opinion is a, is a big, a strong point compared to, to Docker in our environment. Basically, two things. Udi root, it's a C program, you just build it. Make configure, make, make, install. That's it. Then you have to configure some files, but minor configuration changes to the, over the default. And then the image gateway, which is Python, that um, 
it doesn't need to be compiled. You can run it with your own, whatever you want it. Um, but if you don't have access to the machine, to the to your journal root, you don't have a assignment that can do it for you, you can just use Docker Compose for it. Really, really easy. So this allows you to run Shifter with the Docker with very few modifications to your systems. Provided, of course, that you can run Docker on your system. So, see, now we've seen how it works. We've seen that it's simple, relatively simple to compile. Let's just show you some quick use cases, and I'll be quick here because, you know, it's time to go home. Um, I'm going to go with a few quick samples. Um, in this case, I'm going to show uh, a full OS container. Um, basically, what I'm doing here is showing two examples of a CentOS non-interactive session on a Debian interactive session. So, with Slurm, you can have login to a node with this uh, is run minus minus P2Y. So if you run a non-interactive session, you just do an SALOC with your image, you get your node, and then you run your binary, in this case, this one or this one, with the word shifter behind it, before it. So you, in, the, in this example, you're running here on your uh, need 12 which is a Cray node, a CentOS application. And I'm showing you that this CentOS application is running fine because YAM usually doesn't run well on a, on a less uh, uh, OS that we have on Craze. Interactive session is a little bit different, but not much. Basically, you just do the same SR lock with a different image, the one you want. You run SRAM with minus minus PTY shifter, and you are locked into your Cray node with a Debian OS version. In this case, I can show you, I'm showing you that you have. Uh, the kernel of Cray, this version, but you are running the Debian, Debian OS with uh, apt, for example, you run apt-get or whatever you, you, whatever you have compiled for Debian, you can run it off the box, no big issues. But this is quite a simplistic approach, right? Yeah. So this is compute node. Yeah. With native Slurm, you, can, you, you have this, uh, sorry, PTY on your compute node. But this is a quite simplistic approach, right? I mean, we're showing just a true root, basically. Well, we can do all things at, at the same time. We, you can run your applications. You have a Python application that is complex and, you know, have many requirements. If you're familiar with the Korean environment, you know that building Python and has many possible ways of going in different areas, and it's complex to make something static. So you could pack your application Make sure it runs on your laptop, and then you pull one of the standard images, in this case, Python 351, and then you run your application with it. Easy. There is really no hassle here. You just run your SRAN shifter, my script, which is an application itself that does this, and there you go. You're running on your Cray node with Python. Um, also here, you have an, the same thing with Ruby, which, again, is not that straightforward to get on a to get running on a Cray. But then this is single node applications. We haven't gone further than that. This is, maybe your application requires five, 10 nodes, maybe 1,000, I don't know. We can use Shifter to do that. So in this example, I'm showing you a Python application running across multiple nodes, in this case, two nodes. Um, a similar application as before, it's very simple code, running on two nodes at the same time. And we just need to, with Slurm, you just need to allocate two nodes and tell the image. So Shifter with Span plugin will go into the node and make sure that you have on all the nodes your, your required uh, images. They have network, standard network of the nodes. So if you're applica Across all the nodes? Across all the nodes. It's, it's, like any other, it's the same thing as if you would log into a node, basically. Yeah, you, you can, it, it's a special network. Well, it's RSIP. If you go, to, if you want to go to the internet, you need to use RSIP, but it's transparent to the users, some kind of an app. If you share the node, yes. No, they have to share the same IP address of the node. Basically, what Shifter does is show you your container, which is a two root, Dev, dev, proc, mal, um, sys, everything as it is. So it's not a container. It's not a container in the Docker sense. It's a, 
True. Yeah. It's a simplistic approach to the problem of containers, in particular on the Cray side. Um, but this is only shows part of the picture. There, some, there are some things such as MPI that don't run out of the box. Uh, I know that NERSC is working on getting it to work out of the box. Um, they have a way to make, uh, as far as I understood, put the Cray MPI part at runtime on your contain container. So you, will be able, you should be able to run MPI tasks with a standard container on your Cray machine. But it's still in the, in the way to go. Uh, we are working for a path on allowing GPUs to be used. So we have, uh, unfortunately, my colleague Lucas could not be here today. But um, he has been able to run some, uh, um, some uh, jobs with, uh, with CUDA in, in one of our cranials with, um, with an image he created. Um, basically, he's getting native performance with GPUs. The complex to get here is a little bit complex for the moment, but it's working. So as a proof of concept, it's working. And we will be continue developing that in the future. So those are typical examples. But let me show you one real case scenario we are having, we are having at CSCS. Uh, so we run uh, tier two at uh, what we call it, um, tier two. Basically, in the, the, in the LHC, you have uh, the, world, the worldwide LHC computing grid is some um, amount of centers that provide uh, x86 compute, compute nodes. And they are federated with some particular tools. Um, the, the, the important thing of this is that it's all scientific Linux, Red Hat based, or CentOS machines. So all the software stack is built for that. They have a, what they call a CERN VM, virtual VM file system, something, that has everything compiled for it. If you, if you are a uh, grid provider, you just put your compute nodes and the software is there built for you. You don't have to do anything. But if you are on, are on a supercomputer, you have the issue that, well, maybe you have your running less, such as we are. Maybe you're run, running Debian, and you cannot easily change. Um, so this is where we use Shifter. So how do you put on a, a Cray XC compute node running the Cray Linux environment this Red Hat compatible software. You could try to run it, but some things don't work. They just say fault. Um, you could build your own two routes and here and there, but once again, that becomes increasing, increasingly complex when you have to deal with uh, user permissions. So in this case, what we use, we, we came to Shifter. Uh, we run unmodified application from their community. Atlas, CMS, and HCV can run production jobs on our test facility. Uh, it's only a small test case. We have about Two nodes, 48 cores, but we have been able to run up to 250 something. Uh, it's still very early, but the basic thing work, things work. Um, we have been able to read to uh, get comparable performance efficiency between uh, Phoenix, which is this and, the, and this one here. Uh, sorry, the, between this one, yeah, and this one, and this one, and this one. Uh, be, Comparable efficiency between the Cray machine and a, and a cluster dedicated for that, which is x86 standard Red Hat machines. It is true that um, in this particular case, we are comparing very efficient jobs with have no I.O. and It's all CPU bound, but the proof of concept, it works. We are able, in, I'm showing you an example here, we are able to show, to share in the same node, in this case, need 43 jobs from different VOs. Different uh, VO means here username. Um, it could be the same container, it could be different containers. So we could, for example, say we want to pack all CMS jobs into one container and make those containers run in our system. Um, and with native learn, this works beautifully. You can share nodes if, if needed, um, which makes it look very, very much like a, like a, regular, like a regular cluster. Um, so that's it. I don't really have much more to say. I, I was hoping that it was, this will drive some discussion. But um, to summarize a little, a little bit, um, we prefer Shifter so far for this, uh, for these reasons, uh, mostly because of what I mentioned about the file systems. The fact that it doesn't need a local team on the compute nodes and that it's off the box built for Slurm or Torque, whatever you have. Um, 
So it works out well, very well for us, at least in this particular example. Uh, it's open source and we can drive the, the, the development, so we are in very close contact with uh, people at NERSC, the developers. Um, everyone can open, can commit uh, changes, can do a pull request, so if, feel free to contribute. It's really a community-driven effort. Um, of course, there are some things that need to be worked out. There's work, work ahead of us. Uh, basic cases in HPC such as MPI don't work off the box. And this is, well, there's not much we can do about it except for developing well, what needs to be developed. Um, there are no AC ACLs yet, so if you have 100 users pulling 100 images, each one of them different one, everyone can see everything, which may or may not be what you were expecting, but uh, it's, it's on, the, on the path. Uh, and then something that is really blocking us also to put in this into more pre-production environment is that uh, it's certainly not user-friendly. So if your user wants to pull the image, as I, as I showed before, you pull the image, but you don't have any feedback from it. So you wait three minutes, ten minutes, one hour, whatever it takes, and then your image is there. So it's not that user-friendly, at least that part. But we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, here are some hints, and uh, well, that's it. If you have questions, yes. For you, just saying. Uh, thank you for, for your speech. It was very interesting. I have a few questions. Yep. Uh, first of all, uh, I found uh, because uh, I uh, I know the shifter for a few months. I know that it was revealed on uh, supercomputing last year. Uh, first question: Where I can download? It's on GitHub, but yep. uh, this is the the uh, right source, right? Yes. But there is mention basically no installation guide, uh, no documentation, and uh, let's see. Let's fix it that. If I ever find that, there we go. They says that it will be in uh, released in future. There should be something about it. Come on. So if you click into the wiki here, where? Sorry. There are some building. I okay. put some of this myself. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Uh, then, uh, how about non cray implementation? Uh, that works. Works. We are testing it currently in one of our clusters. Um, we are having some issues with how the so you have this we have a this list cluster that has some particular way of exposing the OS and we're working to make it work where if you have a cl normal cluster with a disk the normal disk it works off the shelf you just build it off you go and uh, how about uh, this um, how stable is the implementation uh, it's uh, for example it's some kind of beta or it's production ready or well, Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, we call it pre-production in the sense that the only release that there has been, 15.12, it's quite stable. There, it's very far back in terms of features, but um, it works. And uh, what about PBS support? Uh, there is some, if I remember correctly, there are some uh, um, plugins for that, the same as Celera. You just need to, go to compile it when, when you build the image gateway. You have to sorry the UD root. You have to add it. Yeah, and to, to fully understand uh, the principle, uh, you create a loopback device, uh, create uh, um, create um, squash f f file system, and uh, copy the image from Docker to the to the this file system, and run as a user space process yeah. under under user. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Basically that's basically it. summarizing it. Okay, it's, thank it's you. It. Questions? So we have three questions. Uh, I would like to ask if you are planning to test another types of workloads like memory intensive, storage intensive, and what results are you expecting? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, certainly before we think about putting this in any kind of production, that is not the use case I just showed, we have to, to test that. We currently, as I said before, we have a cluster being 
whoops, being tested <laughs> with different normal HPC applications. And maybe next year we can come up with another report. Yes. Um, does Shifter implement resource isolation? No. No. And the reason is that I can tell you is that I'm not a, I'm not sure how much of the net namespaces of the, the normal kernel is on the Linux kernel that Cray provides. Okay. And one more thing. What, what do you think about containers in HPC in general? Do you think they are a future? I personally think they have a lot of future because it's a nice or easy way for scientists to uh, pack their applications in ways that are easy to transport and test. One question. Yeah. So is there any overhead comparing to the overhead of Dockers? Nothing. Do you have any measurements for that? Uh, the guys at NERSC did some measurements. There is something available on the website. And they got good performance. And um, how do you think you will keep up with the speed of the Docker development? I mean, if they introduce username spaces where you do not have this problem of uh, mapping uh, the root file system into the container and then be root inside of, or on top of the root file system, and, and this enhancement that they will get in the next releases, how do you think you can compete with this speed of development and then still be... Certainly there is not... How to put this? Um, if Docker or someone else addresses your problems for HPC, I don't really personally see the effort, see the effort of developing an additional solution. However, this is a driven community effort. Is Docker a driven community effort? Open source? I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm asking. I mean, they have a, a daemonless, you have daemonless ways of, create, of running containers, right? You have Rocket, you have RunC, so there's no daemon involved anymore. Yep. And so we have it, uh, maybe we I can mean, discuss later. In, in our particular case, right now, works beautifully, but we have to see in the future. I mean, yeah, you never sure. know what's going to happen in two years, five sure, years. Sure, sure. So that will be the last question. How do you interface uh, to the front end of the WLCG? So we have a machine called Arc, Arc C, yep. that is opens this grade to the WLCG community. And uh, we did very few modifications to the Arc code just to be able to add the shifter parameters to the SBATCH generation. Ah, okay, file. so you do it in the back end. Yeah, script. that's it. So let's thank our speaker.